Hooray! I did it! Or I was doing it. Which one? Past simple or past continuous? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use use both the past simple and the past continuous in IELTS speaking. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hi guys, it's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy. Now listen, recently I did a video about the four present tenses. We looked at present simple, present continuous, present perfect tenses. And if you haven't seen it, go up here and watch those videos. Um, today, though, we're going all the way back doo -doo 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 -doo, into the past. Past simple or simple past and past continuous. What's the difference? How do we use them in IELTS speaking? Well, stick with me and I'm going to show you how we do it. Just to remind you, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, Keith's IELTS Mastermind Community for IELTS speaking, follow the link below. Come and join us. Lots of activity happening, interesting, sharing, loads of ideas and motivation to boot. So let's go back to the past. So when it comes to the past, there are, with the past simple, right, there are four things we can look at. We're going to look at states in the past, completed actions, um, past habits, and also imaginary things in the present or the future. So first of all, let's look at the first one here, um, states in the past. And this is also kind of continuous activities or actions in the past. So we're talking about live, living. I live in Spain, but I lived in England is a state. It was a state in the past um, or a continuous action. For example, I went to university at Sheffield. Um, I went to university for three years. So that went is not I went to the university once and then came home. No, I, I went there every day for three years. It was a continuous action similar to a state, right? I went to university. I worked in Malaysia for three years. Same idea. It was a continuous action going to work over a period of time. So we use the past for these typical states, right? So let's have a quick look at the form here of the past simple. We have the subject plus the verb with ed if it's regular. Okay. So for example, I lived in Manchester when I was young. I lived ed. I lived in Manchester. If it's irregular, of course, you have the subject plus the irregular verb. Um, and th there is a list you can get of all the irregular verbs. So, for example, to go, went. I went to school in Oldham. It's true. So that's the positive. Looking at the negative, we just take the subject plus did, not, plus the verb, right, if it's regular. The did not, we often contract, especially when speaking, so it becomes didn't, 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 didn't. I didn't live in London when I was a child. I didn't live. Often when we have the, the, the verb after didn't, the t is softer. I didn't live. Rather than saying, I didn't live, which is a bit difficult, we kind of soften the T. We almost drop the T. I didn't live. I didn't live. Okay, so it's not plosive. I didn't live in London when I was a child. I lived in Manchester. And of course, it's the same even for the irregular verbs, right? So, for example, go, went, I didn't go to school in London. Same idea. The T is not, it's dropped, but it's kind of not plosive. So it's not T. It's I didn't go. I didn't go. 
So you can't hear the T, right? I didn't go to school in London. I went to school in Manchester. Right. Okay. What about you? Where did you go to school? Right. And where did you live as a child? Excellent. Good. Now let's have a look at the question. So the basic questions, the yes, no questions, it's did plus the subject, I, you, me, we, he, she, they, plus the verb, whether it's regular or irregular, right? So did you live, not did you lift, no, did you live in London when you were a child? Did you go to school in England? Okay, did plus the subject plus the verb in the infinitive, right? Did you go? Did you live? If we're looking at the W questions, the which way, which way? No, which, why, where, when, who, how, although it's a H, it's still known as a W question. Then it's the question word, like where did plus the subject plus the verb. Where did you go? What did you do? Okay, be careful. It's not what did you did. No, not where did you went. No, 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 no. Where did you plus the verb? Where did you go? What did you do? Okay, great. So that's the format. Let's get into, very briefly, pronunciation, right? Now, this is important because when you're writing, it's easy right? It's the simple past verb, regular verbs, you add ed, right? Or d. However, pronunciation of that ed has three different ways. It can be d, t, or id, right? So for example, lived. I lived in Manchester. I lived in Manchester. Okay. So when the the end of the verb, the consonant is voiced, then the d is used, and it's very, very soft. I lived in Manchester. However, when the last consonant of the, the verb is unvoiced, like work, work, you can touch your throat, it's not voiced, work, then it's a t sound. I worked, I worked in Malaysia. I worked in Malaysia. Can you say that? I worked. I worked in... Ba, 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 ba. I worked in Malaysia. And you? I lived in Manchester. And you? As a child, right? We're talking in the past. And the last one is if the verb ends in the, the D sound or a T sound, then, for example, study... I studied, I studied hard, attend, attended, okay, I studied in England. Did I study hard? Yeah, I studied quite hard. So remember, three different sounds for the simple past regular verbs. Let's look more at the use. Right, so as we mentioned, um, we can use the past when talking about states, about living, working, studying. So, for example, if you're talking about childhood, right, or talking about study at university or past jobs, all of these, we can use the simple past. Talking about childhood. Tell me about your childhood. <laughs> Come and lie down on the couch. Tell me about your childhood, okay? I lived, well, I might say, right, I lived in Manchester as a kid. Um, I went to a nice school, actually. Um, so I'd say, all in all, I had quite a happy childhood, right? Lived, went, had, just using the simple past. What about university? Tell me about your university years. I went to uni in Sheffield, where I studied French, right? I lived in student digs for the first year, and then after that, I rented a flat. Went, studied, lived, rented, right? So we're using simple past. Tell me about your university studies. What about jobs? Tell me about a past job you had. Hmm. Well, 
I worked as a waiter when I left uni, believe it or not. And then I went on to get a job in a bank. Oh, it was ever so boring. Right? Worked, went, was. Simple past. Talking about past jobs. Okay, so these are all states. Let's move on. So the second use of the simple past is for completed actions in finished time, right? So finished time is a time that's finished in the past. For example, yesterday, last night, two days ago, at five o'clock yesterday. All of these are finished time periods. And the action you did there would be the simple past, right? For example, I watched television after dinner last night. It's true, actually. After dinner, I sat down and I watched television. It was really good. There was a great program about... Ah. <clears throat> so I won't go on, but simple past, right? Now, we can use this really effectively in two different areas. The first one is something called the pattern of three. And the pattern of three is very, very common in English, in natural spoken conversation. We give three actions in the past, one after the other. And often we drop the subject we in the second and the third. So, for example, I got up, went to the bar and ordered a drink. So the I disappears after the first one. It's an ellipsis, right? I got up, went to the bar and ordered a drink. And it just has a very natural rhythm. And it's hugely common. And it's, it's a really good way of telling stories, especially in IELTS speaking part two, to have this idea of I did this, I did that and did that, right? I woke up, got dressed and went to work. It's a really effective pattern of three. Here's an example, right? Let's say there's a part two question about, talk about a photo you took. Okay, so I was on Mount Blanc, right? The view was out of this world. So I took out my camera, took a selfie of me on the mountain and shared it with my friends on Instagram. Do you get it? Here, I took out my camera, took a selfie and shared it. Pattern of three. Really nice. Now, the second bit is about adding details, right? And we use this after the present perfect. Again, a very, very common pattern, very effective present perfect to describe a life experience. And then adding details, we use the simple past, right? I've been to Paris twice. I first went there when I was 20, right? I have been to Paris, present perfect. I first went there, giving extra detail and the time, simple past. I went there when I was 20. Very common structure. Let's see how we can use that in IELTS speaking. For example, you may get a part two question to talk about a book, a book you like or a book you found interesting. You might say, I've read, I've read many personal development books, but last week I read one that really blew my mind. It was The One Thing. Gary Keller, brilliant book. Go and check it out. But I have read many books. Last week I read one that blew my mind. Blew my mind just means really impressed me, right? Was Had a really good impression on me. Great. So you can see how with this talking about your experiences, adding detail, simple past. Brilliant. The third way of using the simple past is to talk about past habits, right? When I was a child, what were my past habits? Well, I played football every week. Um, I went to painting class. I went to tennis class quite often. Um, I did this and I did that, right? So simple past. I played football every week as a child. It's a past habit. You'll remember in other videos, we've talked about used to and would, but also the simple past for past habits. Now, this is really good for the part one questions about, did you 
do something something as a child. And you're talking in the past, but you can be looking at past habits, right? For example, questions like, did you go on picnics as a child? Did you take art classes as a child? Well, you might say, yes, we went on picnics most weekends in the summer. We went on picnics most weekends in the summer. That repeated habit. Or the art classes. I studied art class at school. We had class every Friday. Repeated habit. We had class every Friday. Great. Very simple. Very effective. The last and fourth one is about imaginary things. Why do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> So I'm talking about wishes here, right? When you wish something were different, you're imagining now or in the future. With wish, we use the simple past. I wish I had a lot of money. I wish I had a new car. I wish I had, I don't know, I wish I had a beautiful house in the countryside. I wish I had. Really important. But this is really nice, right? For example, I wish you were here. Oh. I wish my family could come and stay with me. Can, could. I wish my family could come and stay with me. But they can't because of the pandemic. OK, so it's very nice, I think, sometimes at the end of part two stories or when you're doing part two, you can often finish with a wish Maybe you're talking about this and that and that, a beautiful house that you, an ideal house you would like to have. And I wish I had a house in the countryside, right? Simple past, but it's a really good structure. I wish I had, I wish I could, da, 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 da. I wish about the present or the future. That's it. Holy moly. <laughs> That's the end of the past simple. Let's move on now to look at the past continuous. Okay, so there are probably three main ways we can use this, right? Story setting, you know, like telling a story once upon a time in a land far, far away, many years ago, there was a princess and she was sitting in the tower waiting for the prince to come. <laughs> Of course, you're not going to tell that kind of story in IELTS speaking. But that said, in part two, there is a chance to tell anecdotes and stories. This will be useful. Number two is the... Um, guys, sorry, can you get the door? Right. Number two is here, the past continuous for interrupting. Guys, come on. I'm trying to make a video. Yeah. All right. Ah, so it's the past continuous for something that we call the... Inter I know it's the postman. Can you just answer the door? Ah, I'm trying to work here. Number two is interrupted activity. I was trying to teach you and they interrupted me. Hmm. Right. Number three. <laughs> is past habits. Now you've got to say, hang on, Keith, you said past habits was the past simple. Well, yes, it was. But also, and this is the beauty of English, right? The past continuous can be used, right? You have different um, tenses, different tools you can use to create your meaning. Great. So those are the three So let's look now at the, the format of how we make the past continuous. By the way, do you like how I magically turned on the light? <laughs> so the past continuous we've got, right? I, he or she plus was plus the verb in the gerund, the ing. So, for example, I was waiting for the bus. Uh, he was waiting for the train. She was waiting for the plain right notice the was is 
normally a weak form because we don't normally stress it, right? I not was, but was. I was waiting. Try that. I was waiting. She was waiting for the bus. Nice. So there's that big stress on the waiting. She was waiting. Excellent. Good. That's I, he, she. But if it's we, you, or they, were, W-E-R-E, -E, were, plus the verb in the gerund, the I-N-G, right? They were waiting for me. They were waiting for me. Notice again, the were is weak usually because we stress the next word, waiting. They were. They were waiting. They were waiting. They were waiting for me. Try. We were waiting for them. Nice. Great. That's the form. Of course, in the negative, we just put the subject, I, he or she, plus the plus was, not, plus the gerund, right? I was not waiting. However, sp speaking, we normally contract was not to wasn't. I wasn't waiting. Try that. I wasn't waiting. I wasn't waiting for the train. Honest, I wasn't waiting for the train. <laughs> um, or we have we, you, or they, plus were not, plus the gerund. Were not becomes weren't, weren't. They weren't waiting. They weren't waiting. So you'll notice again, the T at the end often is not plosive. So instead of they weren't waiting, it's they weren't waiting. They weren't waiting. Can you hear the T is almost dropped? It's imploded. <laughs> imploded. I mean, it's not plosive. It's not T. It's just they were, they weren't waiting. They weren't waiting for the bus. We weren't waiting for them. Can you hear that? I hope you can hear that. Okay, let's have a look at the first one. Story time. Story setting. Setting of a story. We're talking about giving the setting or the background to a story, anecdote, an activity, right? It doesn't have to be once upon a time, a whole story like Shrek. It can be just even a sentence, right? It was raining outside. It was raining outside, so I decided to stay at home. As simple as that. It was raining outside is giving the background, what's happening, and then I decided to stay at home. Or the sun was shining. I decided to go out, right? Or the pandemic was still going on, and da 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 da. And it's giving you the background to the story, right? And very often, as I mentioned, it's followed then by the simple past. It was raining outside, so I decided to stay at home. The pandemic was still going on, but I needed to travel back home. Or the pandemic was still going on, but I needed to travel abroad. Was going on, here with still, right, was still going on, needed. I needed to travel abroad. So that is a common structure, right? You've got the background in the past continuous and then next the simple past. Even in one sentence, right? Doesn't have to be a big fancy story. Okay. Now, how can we use this particularly with some IELTS questions? Well, let's take a couple of examples and I'm thinking particularly in part two here. Imagine there's a question, describe a conversation that you heard, right? As part of your answer, you may want to give a setting and then say what happened. So you might say, I was attending a conference on education and I was really looking forward to it. But it turned out that the main speaker was really boring, right? Can you see? I was attending. That's the background. I was looking forward to it is also part of the background. And then boom, what happened? The main speaker turned out or it turned out that or the main speaker turned out to be boring, right? It, 
So the turned out is the past. Turn out just means in the end, the result was the main speaker was boring. So that's very simple part. That's not your whole answer, right, for part two. But giving the background, maybe at the beginning of your answer, this could be a nice way to use it. What about this question? Describe a time you won something, maybe a race or a competition, maybe, right? Again, you could say, well, I was taking part in the school sports day when I was a kid and I ran in two races and I won both of them. I was taking part, it's the background, and then what happened? Bum, I ran in two races and I won both of them. Okay, so again, you've got the past continuous followed by the simple past. Very typical, nice ways to um, maybe begin these answers. Okay, okie dokie, let's move on to the next one. Now, this one is the interrupted activity. So basically, we use the past continuous to describe an activity in process. And at some point, boom, there's a cut or an interruption and a second activity happens, right? But of course, it's in the past. So imagine if you will, it was raining outside. Imagine you were waiting for the bus, right? Five minutes, 10 minutes, and you're standing there waiting for the bus and you see Tom and you say, oh, hello, Tom, right? So I was waiting for the bus when I saw Tom. Simple as that. I was waiting for the bus and then this second activity interrupts or cuts in. Oh, I saw Tom, right? Whilst I was waiting for the bus, I saw my friend Tom. Continuous, past simple. Another common structure, right? How to use them together. So let me show you how you can use this. Again, the interrupted activity in the same questions, right? Imagine a part two, describe a conversation you heard. Remember I gave you the background, talking about the conference, and uh, in the end, the speaker was really boring, right? Um, but here we could say, as I was taking my seat, the main speaker got up on the stage and began, right? As I was taking my seat, I'm in the process of sitting down. At that time, boom, the main speaker got up and began speaking. Past continuous, simple past, very simple. And I'm developing my answer here. Let me show you the similar thing, right, for the other question. So remember, describe a time when you won something. I've told you a bit about the story, the background, and then I can come in and say, when they were giving me the medals, my mum took several photos. When they were giving me the medals in the process, at the same time, boom, my mum took several photos because she was ever so proud of me winning the races. So a similar thing, right? The same structure. We're giving mum took several photos. Great. Let's move on to the third and final situation. Now, the third point is past habit. And you are quite right. We also use the simple past for past habit, right? I played football every weekend when I was a kid right? And that's quite specific. But when we're being more general, um, we use the past continuous with the adverb always, right? I was always playing with computers as a kid. I was always playing football as a kid. So it's not specific time when you did it, but just generally and the use of always. I was always doing that. I was always arguing with my brother, right? When we were growing up together, we were always arguing with each other. <clears throat> Typical brotherly fighting, right? So it's a habit and it's always. So the past continuous with always. So this is something you could use talking about your childhood, about past jobs, about university studies in the past, right? For example, at university, I was always studying late into the night 
Um, I was always burning the midnight oil, right? That's burning the midnight oil, working late or studying late at night. I was always studying late at night. It's neither good nor bad. It's neutral, but it's great to describe a past habit. Going back to one of the part two questions, describe a time you won something, right? So we've given the background and the setting. We gave an interrupted activity example. Also here, you could say something like, as a kid, I was always racing everywhere, here and there. So it's no surprise I won the race on sports day, right? You're giving a further background talking in the past. As a kid, I was always racing or running everywhere, right? Nice past habit. So there you've got it. The past continuous for setting or giving the background, talking about interrupted activities um, and also past habits with always. Fantastic. So that's it. We've seen today how you can use the past simple and the past continuous in different contexts and often together, right? It's not one or the other. We often use them together. And I hope you can see how you can do that for different questions um, for the IELTS speaking test. Excellent. Great. If you want to know more about grammar mistakes, then do watch this video up here, which tells you the top five grammar mistakes that students are making in IELTS speaking. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes peeled. I'll be doing a few more grammar videos to help you with IELTS speaking in the near future. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this, please do like it. Turn on the notifications as you subscribe for the video and go ahead and watch some more to improve your grammar for IELTS speaking. Take care, my friends. As always, it's a pleasure. Bye-bye.